Guys and gals, serotonin syndrome and neuroleptic malignant syndrome are two distinctly different disease processes that both manifest as a result of taking an inappropriate amount of different types of medications. For whatever reason, these terms get mixed up all the time. People think that, oh, these are two big scary things that happen in psychiatry, and because of that, uh, that section of first aid really isn't given too much attention. So you see this on your test. You see somebody who starts to develop weird signs and symptoms in a clinical vignette, and you freak out because you're not sure if it's serotonin syndrome or if it's NMS. So I'm going to take a few minutes today and really simplify this for you. I'll tell you the different symptoms that you need to look for to pick up. Is this serotonin syndrome or is this NMS? But I'm going to wrap up by giving you a mnemonic that'll really help you differentiate these. So first, let's start with the the key symptoms, and I'll go through the normal path of phys and we'll wrap up with my famous mnemonic. So serotonin syndrome, or SS, and neuroleptic malignant syndrome, NMS, have symptoms that overlap, so let's start with those. You're In both processes, you're going to see fever, tachycardia, and hypertension. So regardless of if it's serotonin syndrome or NMS, they're going to have autonomic instability and a fever. So that doesn't help you at all. So if you see those symptoms on the test, throw it out of your brain. It doesn't help you solve, get the right answer. What's going to give you the differentiating symptom are what you see on this slide. So for serotonin syndrome, you have clonus, which is a hyperreflexic state. So remember the way that you score reflexes are from zero to four. And as soon as you give someone a plus four reflex, you're basically saying they are very brisk reflexes with clonus. Okay. So clonus, Google it. If you don't know what it is, you should watch a video on, on YouTube of what clonus actually looks like. But it's one of the most hyperreflexic states that the body can have where you've got this involuntary continuous twitching of a muscle. So that's clonus. The other thing that you'll see in serotonin syndrome is diarrhea. So profound diarrhea does not happen in neuroleptic malignant syndrome. It's unique to serotonin syndrome. Now, conversely, on the other side, neuroleptic malignant syndrome is marked by rigidity, okay? Lead pipe rigidity. So someone who's really, really rigid, that's NMS. Whereas in serotonin syndrome, they're just hyperreflexic. They're not rigid, okay? So if you don't understand the difference between rigidity and clonus, you need to start there and go on YouTube. But again, like if I could put it into words, rigidity is, the, is more of a muscle tone issue and uh, clonus is more of a reflex issue, so hyperreflexia versus hypertonia, okay? The other thing that you'll see in neuroleptic malignant syndrome is the patient will have an elevated CK and an elevated white blood cell count. So it could look like an infection because you'll see the elevated white count, and it could look like rhabdomyolysis because you'll see the elevated CK. So those symptoms are very unique to neuroleptic malignant syndrome. But these four are what I want you to keep in mind, or these five, I should say. Clonus and diarrhea for serotonin syndrome, and rigidity, elevated CK, elevated WBC for NMS. Now I wanna pause for a second and really simplify this because something that didn't occur to me back when I was in medical school that should have occurred to me and I hope occurs to you guys is that this is actually really, really simple. So I want you to just pause for a second. You know, or you should know, that if you start somebody on a serotonergic drug, like an SSRI, right? So all the antidepressants, they're gonna get some side effects as soon as they start the drug and, and usually as they proceed while on the drug. So what are the hallmark side effects of SSRIs? So we know that when we put patients on SSRIs, they get things like diarrhea, okay? They get things like nausea and vomiting. They get things like hyperreflexia. Uh, so why do you think these symptoms manifest? This is a result of excess serotonin. So it should be no surprise to you that the symptoms of serotonin syndrome are the same symptoms just blown out of proportion that you get when you start an SSRI. So if you start something like Prozac or Zoloft or one of the antidepressants, you're going to get GI upset, right? So why, it's, it shouldn't be a surprise to you that in serotonin syndrome, you see diarrhea, nausea, and vomiting. When you start an SSRI, you do get a little hyperreflexic. It's never really an issue because it's subclinical. But in serotonin syndrome, where there's way too much serotonin in the body, you get clonus, okay? So it should not be a surprise that the symptoms you see when you start something like Prozac, seen here on the slide, which is an SSRI, fluoxetine, are the same symptoms, just on a very, very smaller scale, that you get in serotonin syndrome. And then let's talk about NMS for a second. So neuroleptic malignant syndrome, the word neuroleptic, means antipsychotic. It's just the word that they used back in the day. So really you could call this uh, 
antipsychotic malignant syndrome. Now, you know that there are things like extra pyramidal symptoms when you give somebody an antipsychotic, and one of those is dystonia, where you get very rigid. So if you give a patient something like haloperidol, which normally makes patients rigid, it should be no surprise that neuroleptic malignant syndrome, which is normal side effects just blown out of proportion, cause rigidity, right? Obvious, guys right? And anytime you're rigid or have a muscle that's rigid and breaking down, you get an elevated CK. It's the same thing you see in rhabdomyolysis. It's the same thing you see when patients do cocaine. It's the same thing you, do, you see when Arnold Schwarzenegger goes to the gym and pumps out iron, right? You break down muscle, you get an elevation in your CK. So if you give somebody an antipsychotic, aka a, a neuroleptic, their muscles get rigid, Normally, it's not a problem, but in malignant syndrome, it's really, really bad, right? So it's blown out of proportion. Their CK goes up and their white count goes up because they're breaking down tissue, okay? So that's how you can sort of simplify it in your brain if you don't want to deal with the mnemonic. But for all of my lovely followers who love their healthy dose of a dirty USMLE mnemonic, let's get into that right now. So with serotonin syndrome, here are the key symptoms, clonus, hyperreflexia, diarrhea, and then, of course, the other ones in black, which don't really differentiate it from neuroleptic malignant syndrome. But when you think of serotonin syndrome, focus on the SS. And I want you to think of a boat, like the SS United States, right? So the way that boats are named in, uh, in, in countries is that we use SS and then the boat gets named. So SS United States, SS Phoenix, whatever it is, that's a boat. So we're gonna think of a boat and I'm gonna label this boat picture to tell you about our symptoms. So you see the, the, the steam coming out of the top, it's squirting out, that's diarrhea. So you're just squirting stuff right at the top, that's the diarrhea in SS. The SS reminds us of the boat, SS for serotonin syndrome. The other thing is that the boat is moving very, very quickly and cannot stop once it's propelled forward because it's a boat in water, therefore that signifies clonus. And the last thing here is I want you to focus on the line that you see coming out of the front of the boat. The line is for linear nasalid. So linasalid, which is a really rarely used antibiotic these days, causes serotonin syndrome. It is a serotonergic antibiotic. It shows up on USMLE and Comlex all the time for whatever reason. So the line in this picture is linasalid. Linasalid is, has been known to cause serotonin syndrome. So look for the vignette on your test where you have the patient on an SSRI or an SNRI and all of a sudden they get sick, they get some unknown antibiotic and then they develop serotonin syndrome. So that is the SS picture. Serotonin syndrome is SS. The SS United States is a boat. And then we think about a boat with stuff squirting out the top, that's diarrhea, moving really fast and unable to stop, that's clonus, and lines coming off the front of the boat because linasalid causes serotonin syndrome. Now, NMS, let's do the same thing. So NMS, I told you, means neuroleptic malignant syndrome. And the word neuroleptic is what antipsychotic used to be called. So we didn't call it antipsychotics back in the day. We called them neuroleptics. So really, instead of neuroleptic malignant syndrome, we could just call it antipsychotic bad syndrome, right? Because that's literally what that word means. So neuroleptic malignant syndrome is the, the exact same thing in the English language as saying antipsychotic bad syndrome. And antipsychotic bad syndrome means abs, okay? So neuroleptic malignant syndrome, neuroleptic malignant syndrome is antipsychotic bad syndrome, aka abs. So look at this dude. He's white. You get an eleva elevation in your white blood cell count. He lifts weights, so you're going to get an elevation in your CK, right? Anytime muscle breaks down, you get an elevation in your CK. And look at those biceps. Holy shit, they are rigid, okay? So rigid muscles. The hallmark symptoms of neuroleptic malignant syndrome, aka antipsychotic bad syndrome, abs. Think of the guy with abs. He's got really sick abs, so his CK is elevated. He's got huge biceps, so he's rigid. And he's obviously white, so his white count is up. Guys, that's serotonin syndrome versus neuroleptic malignant syndrome. Again, if you want to think about the symptoms and you don't want to use the mnemonic, think about the side effects you get when you start either a serotonergic drug like an antidepressant or an antipsychotic drug that makes you rigid. Hope this was helpful.